All right, can everybody hear me? Cool, awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna be talking about CDI today, the future of specialized hardware and containers. Uh, I'm Chris Designotis, I'm a software engineer at NVIDIA. I work on our cloud native engineering team. We work on enabling NVIDIA GPUs um, in container runtimes and in Kubernetes. So if you ever used an NVIDIA GPU in a container, you've likely used a, a project that my team maintains. As a quick introduction, right, um, the demand for using devices, in particular hardware accelerators, has been growing and continues to grow. Um, as you probably know, right, the, the types of complex workloads that are ever so pervasive today oftentimes require offloading processing off of the CPU and onto some form of accelerator, right? Um, some of the you know, examples of these applications are machine learning training and inference, uh, encryption, compression, right, just to name a few. Um, and some of the accelerators that are required are you know, GPUs or FPGAs or even some other specialized ASICs like smart NICs for accelerating the data plane. Um, and so, especially as people are trying to run these applications at scale, it's even more important to make them easy to use in containers. One problem that has existed uh, in the ecosystem for a while now is um, support for third-party devices in various container runtimes and orchestrators is pretty fragmented. And what I mean by that is if you go to a different orchestrator or runtime, their recommendation for how to use a third-party device is different. They each have their own um, idea of a plugin or a hook that you can use to enable your accelerator in that ecosystem. Um, you also may be asking, like, why do we need hooks or plugins, right? Why, like on, on Linux, for example, I might just, you know, why, why can't I just mount my device node into the container? Um, the issue is, is for complex devices, especially for GPUs, um, you need much more than just a device node. You may need multiple device nodes, um, you need mounts, right, user space driver libraries. Um, you need IPC sometimes, certain uh, types of IPC, maybe some device initialization. So there's a lot more that needs to happen to make your device available and, and, and in the container and for your, for your application to make use of it. So, right, so every sort of runtime, you know, over time, the, the ecosystem has evolved. So there's different hooks, there's different plugins. Obviously, if you're familiar with OCI hook, that's a good standard. And, uh, as part of the OCI for defining right lifecycle hooks uh, in the container and uh, hooks for the container lifecycle, um, but not every uh, runtime supports uh, OCI hooks the same way. So like Podman and Cryo, if you ever use OCI hooks there, that's really great. You can drop in a hook um, and make use of it. But for Container D, there's not as natural of a support for OCI hooks, or the user experience differs. So what are some consequences of this fragmentation? So there's two primary um, consequences, right? First of all, for users, you have an inconsistent experience. Depending on what runtime you use, right, the, the set of steps required to make that device accessible to your container may drastically differ, as well as the configuration required on the node itself. Um, additionally, right, some, some runtimes may support your device, while others may not, right, depending on what work the vendor has done to support um, different, different runtimes. That leads to my second consequence, which is, right, for device vendors, um, this fragmentation leads to a lot more maintenance on, the, on their end, right? They may need to integrate differently with different runtimes and different orchestrators, um, and that just adds a lot more um, uh, maintenance burden on them, and also requires them to have more of an intimate knowledge of how containers work, right? So hooks, Right, they, you know, you need to kind of understand at a fundamental level how a container works, namespaces, C groups, um, and maybe some device vendors don't have that knowledge or it takes time for them to, to get up to speed in that, in that area. Um, to example, exemplify these consequences with a real example, I wanted to show quickly what this fragmentation looks like for NVIDIA GPUs. Um, so I'm gonna show a few uh, runtimes or container engines and show how NVIDIA has integrated with these engines and how you actually make use of, uh, of a GPU, NVIDIA GPU in these runtimes. So obviously for, for Docker or for, for, for NVIDIA GPUs, you have to have the NVIDIA driver installed. So we, we know that. Um, but there's also some other components that you install from 
that my team maintains to make sure that the GPU gets um, made accessible to the container. So in Docker, we actually have multiple integration points. So as a user, to request a GPU, there's different ways, and that's what I'm showing with the dotted arrow. Not important that you understand these, these tools or these projects, um, but there are multiple of them. With ContainerD, we um, interface here. So this is how um, we interface with ContainerD. With Cryo, we plug in here, so we use our OCI hook uh, directly. And Alexi, this is an example of a non-OCI compliant runtime. We uh, plug in here, so it actually directly calls our lower level container library to modify the container environment um, being run by LXC. So just to show an example of a real GPU, or a real device, and some of the, the result of fragmentation in the community, community, there's different products that our team has had to maintain to make sure that GPUs work in these various runtimes. So here, here comes CDI. So CDI stands for Container Device Interface. Um, it aims to resolve this fragmentation. So it aims to provide a standard, uh, standardize the way in which right, complex devices are exposed to containers. Um, it's a CNCF sponsored project under tag runtime. Uh, there's a working group called the Container Orchestrated Device Working Group. They sort of lead the development of this project. I'll mention them at the very end on how you can get involved. Um, right, so it's a declarative specification, so inspired by the CNI, right, model and specification for container networking. And the main idea, right, is in the spec you can describe what, av what devices are available on your machine and what operations need to be carried out to make that device or set of devices available to a container. So everything is declarative, um, and I'll go into more specifics here. So the main concept in CDI is that uh, is a concept of a device, not just a device node, this, this is a device with a capital D, so it can re represent many things, but the idea is we map a device or a resource that you want to use to a set of OCI runtime spec modifications. So these include, but are not uh, limited to, device nodes, uh, mounts, environment variables, and even uh, container lifecycle hooks, right? So you can represent a device in terms of all of these things. And then as a device vendor, so let's say NVIDIA or Intel or AMD, we can define our devices with the specification, right, in terms of all of these modifications. Um, at runtime, right, a, a, a runtime that understands the CDI spec can read the specification for a device that is requested um, and make all of these modifications to the container spec, right, OCI runtime spec for OCI containers. Um, and right, that, that, that makes sure that your device is accessible to the container. That, that's the high level um, description here of, of, of CDI and, and, and how it works. Um, in terms of naming CDI devices, there is a taxonomy. So to, to uniquely identify a CDI device on your system, right, we, we name it using three components, a vendor, a vendor string, a class string, and a name. So put these three together and you get a fully qualified uh, CDI device on your system. So I'm gonna show in the next two slides some example spec files. So here, this is for a system that has a single NVIDIA GPU. So if I wanna write a spec for my NVIDIA GPU, I um, write a YAML or a JSON file. I specify the, the version of the spec. So in this case, I'm using uh, 0.5.0. I describe what kind of device I am um, defining. So in this case, this is the vendor and the class component. So in this case, nvidia.com slash GPU. Then I have a devices section where I can iterate, have a list of GPUs. This system only has one GPU, so I only have one entry here, and I give it a name, so GPU zero. I can have an arbitrary naming convention, maybe indices or uh, UUIDs. And then for this device, I have right, a list of container edits. So that is edits that need to be made to the container to get access to GPU zero. So that includes right, device nodes, so for example, NVIDIA character devices, mounts for libcuda or other user space driver libraries, or even right, um, utilities like NVIDIA SMI. Um, I can specify where in the host they are and where they should be mounted in the container. I even have hooks I can define. So for GPUs, we often 
run LD config before the main container starts, so the, the LD cache is, is, is a refresh, so you can um, make, you know, uh, these libraries are visible to the main um, process in the container. There's an example for an Intel GPU. I took this off of a, a user on GitHub who was trying to use CDI to, to make use of a GPU in singularity, I believe. And this is all they needed to specify. So they just needed to specify two um, device nodes, I think because they bundled their driver libraries in their container image, so they didn't need that in the spec. But um, this, this got them to, to, to make use of their Intel GPU in their container. So, right, so pretty much very similar to the previous one, obviously a lot shorter. And um, the only difference here is the, uh, the kind of devices, an Intel GPU, not an NVIDIA one. So now we've seen like the spec and what you can define in the spec. Um, what's the overall flow uh, when, when using CDI for device injection? So the first thing that you do is you write, you write these specs for the devices on your system. So you generate a CDI specification um, whether you have an NVIDIA GPUs, Intel GPUs, or any device, right, any device. Um, these files are you know, YAML or JSON files that you store at some, no, uh, at some standard directory. So it can be under Etsy CDI, for example, to describe all the, the CDI devices on your system. This can be done offline or maybe at system boot, right, um, before you want to actually consume these devices. At runtime, right, a, a container engine that understands CDI will read, right, from this sort of database of CDI specifications when requested to do so. So if you run a container and you want to make use of Intel GPU at index zero, um, you pass that fully qualified CDI device name to your runtime. The runtime will go to the spec file, find the entry for that device, update the OCI runtime spec, with all those modifications listed in the, in the spec file, um, and then pass that on to run C, who will actually uh, create your container with everything encoded in the OCI runtime spec. And obviously, right, I have some purpose-built purpose hooks here, so we can still have OCI hooks, right, for updating the LD cache or doing some more um, um, smaller operations, but the, the actual heavy lifting is now done by run C. So before, for complex devices like GPUs, we were doing a lot of the device enumeration and discovery, the, the mounting of libraries, setting up C groups, a lot of these low-level things that RunC already is specialized in doing, right? RunC uh, is built to, to set up a container, right? Um, or, or C run, I mean, you can um, plug and play your, your low-level runtime, but RunC or C run, right, they're built, they're purposely built to run containers and set up with namespaces and C groups and all that. So before we were using these vendor specific hooks, which led to vendors kind of duplicating what run C or C run already specialized in doing. Um, so that, that, that's one big takeaway I take from this diagram is that we're now leveraging run C to do uh, the heavy lifting for us. Um, the second thing is, is now we have a logical separation between device definition and consumption. Um, with hooks in the past, we were actually sort of discovering at runtime, and we're doing this for every container that was being launched. We were discovering, like, what device do I have, and what's the path to a certain library that needs to be injected? When meanwhile, right, we could just do that once before containers start running. So that, that, that is one benefit here as well of the CDI specifications. We have this um, um, separation between a definition of a device and the consumption of it. So to continue with why CDI and what, what are some more benefits, um, right? I think it's obvious so far that right, vendors now can, can define what access to your device means, and they don't need to integrate with specific engines. Uh, all you need to do as a device vendor is write a spec file or maybe provide your users some tooling to help them generate it themselves, uh, and that's it. And so then your device will work as long as your users are using a container runtime that supports CDI. So you don't need to write container runtime or orchestrator specific plugins or hooks. You just need to define your devices in terms of specification. Um, from the user perspective, this allows us to have a uniform user experience across vendors and tools. So on the, on the slide, I have two CLI examples where I am running a container 
uh, requesting some device. In the, in the first example, I have an NVIDIA GPU, and I'm just running, you know, contain, you know, whatever engine I'm using, whether it's Docker or Podman, run with this device. I provide a fully qualified CDA device name, this container image, and this command. And it's, I can plug and play uh, Docker, Podman, or Singularity as the container engine there. All right, and the second um, example there is, is similar, but for requesting an Intel uh, FPGA. So this is quite nice. Um, the, the diagrams I showed earlier of, of NVIDIA GPUs and having sort of different integration points with different engines, this, this goes away and simplifies to, to a common interface, common API for uh, getting a GPU or other device into your container. Okay, I have a short demo. Um, I'm gonna make this bigger. I recorded it beforehand. So I'm just gonna show um, with CDI how accessing NVIDIA GPU, as an example, works uh, end to end. So I have a system here running Docker 26. This happens to be um, a version that supports CDI. So I think starting with Docker 25, which came out relatively recently, Docker supports CDI. The only thing you need to do is enable CDI in your Docker config. So it's a feature gate currently. So I've, I've enabled CDI, I've restarted the, the Docker daemon um, on this system, I have eight GPUs. So I have a, a NVIDIA DGX server that has eight A100s. And I've already gone ahead and installed the, the latest or one, one of the newer drivers um, on the system, the 550. And so besides installing the driver, I did install uh, this one binary that my, that my utility that my team maintains called NVIDIA CTK provides a CLI, it's a CLI tool for configuring runtimes, but also for generating CDI specs for NVIDIA GPUs. So I have the, the latest release candidate installed. Um, we have a, um, a, 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 a command called CDI and a subcommand called list where I can say, list all the CDI devices available in the system. Currently it says zero because I haven't actually generated a spec. So that's expected. I don't have any CDI devices to find. So I have zero, which is expected. If I look at some of the standard directories where we place um, CDI specs, so Etsy CDI and var run CDI are the two by default that Docker looks for for, for any CDI specs in the system, there's no, there's, there's no files in there. So we have no CDI devices to find yet on this, on this machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run, so using our CLI tool, I'm going to write CDI, NVIDIA CTK CDI generate, which is our subcommand for generating a spec. And I'm just specifying an output file. So where do I want this? In this case, I'm, I want to save it as a YAML file under Etsy CDI. So I run this, um, I'm redirecting all the standard error messages, all the log messages, just to keep this clean. Um, and now I have a spec file. I'm not going to show it. It's, it's, it's rather large because I have eight GPUs. And it's a lot larger than the snippet I showed in the slide. So this, the one on the slide only had a few libraries, but the NVIDIA driver comes with a lot. So that file is actually quite large. It has a lot of user space driver libraries, um, essentially the same like device nodes, but it, it's, it's rather large. But just believe me, it's on the system there, and it has right um, enumerated all of the entities on the system, driver libraries, device nodes, uh, and, and hooks that are needed for NVIDIA GPUs. If I rerun that NVIDIA CTK CDI list command, now I have a bunch of fully qualified CDI device names. Uh, it says I have 17 CDI devices, but I only have eight physical GPUs. Uh, the reason why we, we have 17 uh, CDI devices is because we, we sort of overload, we, we have different naming strategies. So you'll see, you'll see the first eight entries here, the first eight names are naming them by index. So I have index zero through seven, our users also like to use UUIDs to specify their GPUs, so we also represent the same physical GPUs with their UUIDs as well. We also have a meta device name called all. If you want to request all GPUs, you can just use that, that name and not specify each device index or, or UUID individually. So now I'm going to run through a couple of examples of actually using these um, devices in your container. So I have a Docker run command uh, requesting right, all GPUs with the all uh, CDI device name. 
and I get all eight of my GPUs uh, in my container. I can also request a, a subset, so I can request GPUs at index zero and seven, and now I get zero and seven, and the, the UUIDs correspond to the, the previous output, so index zero here, index seven here, the, the, the UIDs correspond to what it got injected in this container. And lastly, to run an actual real example, uh, running something a little more interesting, um, I'm gonna run a PyTorch container. I'm gonna use one of the main, uh, the upstream um, examples for training a convolutional neural network using the, the MNIST database of images uh, just for a couple of training epochs. I'm just gonna run two training epochs on my, uh, my first GPU at index zero. So just to, to verify that I can actually make use of my GPU and I have um, all the NVIDIA driver libraries injected, I'm making use of CUDA. So, so there we go. So that, that was a couple of training epochs really quickly, running on my GPU, leveraging CDI to actually make that GPU available to the container. All right, so where can you use CDI today? So there's actually quite a few popular container engines and runtimes that already support CDI. So this includes Podman, Docker, uh, Singularity, if you're using it in OCI mode. Um, Containerd and Cryo already support CDI. So Cryo has, been, has supported it for quite a few releases now. Containerd with 1.7. Um, with Cryo, and, uh, with Cryo and Podman, it's enabled by default, so you can request uh, CDI devices and you don't have to configure um, anything additional with Podman or Cryo. With Docker and Containerd, you currently have to opt into it in their configurations, so that's just something to note. Um, Kubernetes, so we also support using CDI in Kubernetes. So the device plugin API uh, includes a CDI devices field in the container allocate response. So this means that uh, Vendor-specific device plugins, when the kubelet allocates a device for a container in a pod, right, it will call the device plugin, and the device plugin can respond back with fully qualified CDI device names. And those, those names can be passed along the CRI, because we added a CDI device field in the CRI, um, so that that information about what CDI devices need to be made available to the container get all the way propagated down to your runtime, which supports CDI, updates your, your OCI runtime spec and all the low-level details that I showed before. Um, all the plumbing is there in Kubernetes, essentially. Um, so that's with the device plugin API. Um, there's also a, a new uh, API for requesting and allocating resources in Kubernetes called dynamic resource allocation. Uh, otherwise, it goes by DRA. Um, it's currently in alpha. I think there's a move to get it to beta and, and uh, soon in Kubernetes, and there's a lot of, it opens a lot of new use cases for using uh, devices in Kubernetes, and right, CDI is, is used as the basis for uh, defining and requesting resources there. So it is going to be used, it's being used now, and it's gonna be used in the future with DRA and the use cases that DRA um, opens up. So what's next for the CDI projects? So obviously we have growing support in popular container runtimes for the specification, but we're still onboarding you know, users and vendors to using it. So continue to collect feedback on the spec. If there's anything missing, right, we want the community to uh, report that uh, on the, and describe their use cases. Um, the second topic that I think we, the community wants to continue discussing and working on is improving the user experience of generating specs and keeping them up to date. So if you're launching containers interactively, let's say with Docker or Podman, right, you install your respective driver for your device and then you generate a spec. Maybe you can do that at system, you know, at boot, boot time using some tooling, right? But if you upgrade your driver or if you change the state of the device in some way, those specs can go stale and you have to actually remember to update them. Otherwise, your containers will break. So, um, that's something the community wants to uh, further discuss and hash out and make sure that we have a good story around or, or set of best practices for um, generating them as well as keeping them up to date. 
Um, lastly, I think there's, right, I uh, showed a good amount of runtimes that are OCI compliant runtimes that support CDI. There's some interest in extending this to non-OCI runtimes, like LXC, for example. Um, even though in one of my earlier slides, I described that, right, in CDI, we map the spec to OCI runtime spec modifications. Um, it's not really tied to the OCI standard. Like you, you, can, um, you can imagine a world where we translate the CDI spec into um, modifications that need to be made to other runtimes that are not OCI compliant. So I think there's ongoing, uh, it's sort of in the backlog, but I think there's been some interest in, in, in using CDI in, in some of these other runtimes. So how can you get involved? So first off, I put the GitHub link for the Container Device Interface Project. Always welcome to, to raise an issue or a PR there. If you wanna join in on the working group that's leading this effort, I left the uh, link for the, the, the charter. Um, they meet every Tuesday at seven um, PST, or I think it's UTC as well. Um, um, uh, P PST actually, sorry. Uh, every, every other Tuesday at seven PST. Um, there's, you can find members of this working group on Slack at the Tag Runtime channel um, on the CNCF Slack organization. Um, you can also just directly reach out to me. I put my email in Slack and uh, I'd be happy to help you or redirect you to someone who, who may know the answer to your question or concerns. So with that, that concludes my presentation and if there are any questions, I'm happy to, to answer them. Cool, thanks a lot. Questions? Oh, we got multiple already. Did you beat Steve? Gordon? Uh, is it feasible to extend this to uh, Windows devices? And if so, um, has there been any exploration of uh, using CDI for Windows containers on Windows? So native Windows, right? We, Windows containers, um, yes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That, that's my answer. I know for, for WSL that we've, that we've been using, for NVIDIA GPUs, we've, we've had users generating specs for WSL. I'm not sure if we've done any work on native Windows. I actually don't know if we've ever brought up a, at least for NVIDIA GPUs, I don't know about other devices. Um, I'm not sure what this, what our support story is for actually native, like just in general, using a GPU on native Windows. Containers. Gotcha. Uh, there is support for passing through uh, Windows device GUID, uh, by GUID. Um, so that's kind of my thought is maybe it's possible, but I don't, I don't know enough and it's, it's kind of a black box. So okay. it sounds like we're in the same boat there. Yeah, I think we're still in the early stages of Windows containers. Gotcha. But I think the, the idea is if, if, we are, if we are to support Windows containers, we want to use CDI, definitely. Um, so I do see a, a future, but it's uh, longer term uh, uh, looking, right? Not, not in the short term. I, th I think the GPUs on Windows are for games. Sorry, uh, so I, I do have a serious question. So um, in, um, you might have touched on it on, on one of the slides when you showed the example, but um, uh, I don't, and maybe this isn't a big of a problem these days, but um, how do you handle the situation where you might have multiple versions of the driver installed and then ha do, you, do you let the application select which version of the driver, like, like map it in a couple of times, or um, do you only allow one driver version per GPU per host. Does that make sense? Does that question make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, in my experience, we typically recommend only having a single version of the driver. Like, yeah, well, because actually with NVIDIA GPUs, the, the user space libraries are typically tightly coupled with the kernel module, the version. Um, so typically, if you have a specific version of a kernel module loaded, you want a, the same or if not a close version of the driver libraries you use in your app by your application. So typically you can use it on different, different, different versions on different nodes. We've seen users do that, but I'm not familiar with um, so, different so, versions of the library on the same, on the same host. So the, the basic problem though is like, let's say you have like a large uh, cluster of machines with NVIDIA um, GPUs on them and you're and it's going to take you a long time to update all of the GPU driver versions across all your software. Um, uh, the current state is that it forces you to um, either split that pool or have like a flag day where you upgrade all your software at the same time. So I was wondering if, if, if that had been thought of in uh, uh, this specification. But we can, we can take the, that discussion offline sure. um, and, and figure it out. Sure.
So I have two questions. So first one, um, can this support the kind of GPU sharing and fraction? Uh, two quest uh, second question, uh, can we you now specify the multiple different, I mean, heterogeneous hardware uh, series in one container? Could you repeat your, I, so the first question was, can, you, can, can we support the GPU sharing or mm -hmm. fraction, these kind of things? So that's, so CVI just is, is only concerned with defining what does access require. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't have to do with anything about resource utilization or the how. So sharing GPUs is sort of out of scope of what the CDI spec is intended to be used for. Right? It, it's defining what your device, device means, right, in terms of device nodes and libraries and such, but it's not used for um, implementing GPU sharing. So in Kubernetes, uh, we have, right, device plugins and DRA drivers that actually do the, the heavy lifting or the, do the implementation of um, sharing that resource with different containers or different pods, right? This just defines what access to that device means. Uh, what was your second question? Um, Can you specify uh, multiple heterogeneous hardware series? I mean, one container have uh, the Intel GPU and uh, even the GPU together? Yeah, yeah, I can. You, you, you would just request different um, CDI devices, different with, with their fully qualified names. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, I don't know, is this a sensitive question or not? So, uh, where do you see CDI in comparison to an RI? Like, is it a, That's a good like question. substitution or? Yeah, so NRI is a node resource interface. It's another standard that you may confuse with CDI. So node resource interface is like a generic plugin system for container runtimes, right? So a generic plugin that you can use with Cryo or ContainerD and add your vendor specific, or your specific logic. And you can, you can, um, subscribe to certain pod or container um, events and then act, act, act um, accordingly. They're actually different. So CDI is, like I said for the previous question, it's, it's a definition of what a device means. NRI is, uh, allows you to add custom logic, like imperative logic, right? It's not a declarative specification, it's a hook, right? So you can actually consume CDI in NRI. So you can have an NRI hook that responds to some sort of container or pod event, and then use CDI to inject a, a device into the container, right? So you can actually, so CDI is just declarative, declaratively saying what your device is. NRI is a generic plugin system that you can um, perform imperative logic at runtime. So they are, the scope is different of the projects. All right, thank you. All right, oh, last one. Uh, since this is a generic mechanism for you know making edits essentially to an OCI configuration bundle, OCI runtime configuration bundle, are you aware of uh, non-device usages or other other novel usages, or are, is is there interest in this kind of as a generic mechanism for editing the container config outside of the device vendor use case? I am not sure. I actually we've had interest for networking devices, even though CNI exists. There there has been some interest for doing other. Uh, there's a use case for using CDI to, along with CNI for networking devices. I'm not sure if I've seen any user wanting to use CDI outside of like device, like hardware devices. Um, but I think it's an interesting uh, thing to think about in the future. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much.